earlier in our series on uh, vector analysis, we had introduced the line integral and we worked four or five examples of line integral problems. Remember what the general expression was in a vector d dot dr where for a particular line or a particular curve, whatever, r was the position vector, or sometimes it's expressed as v dot dl, where l is just a differential line segment, or the other way, the other form that we had these integrals written was pdx plus qdy. In uh, this video, we want to demonstrate Green's theorem, which consists of this double integral being equal to a line integral. And we have a way of demonstrating it that we hope will make sense. Before we do it, let's remember what a double integral entails. Suppose that we just have a simple figure like this, and here we have a vertical strip. It has a width of delta x, and then inside of it we have these small rectangles, again with delta x, height delta y, and imagine if we added all these little rectangles up, that would give us the area of the vertical strip, and that's what this right here symbolizes, delta y, delta x, that's one of these small rectangles, and then we're adding them up from y equals c to y equals d. And that'll give us the area of that vertical strip. Then imagine adding the areas up of all of the vertical strips, starting at x equals a, and keep adding them up until we reach x equals b. And that's what this expression is. Here's a vertical strip. That's the area of it. Now add the area up of all those vertical strips from x equals a to x equals b. Of course, in calculus, we don't work with delta x's and delta y's. We have infinitesimally small x's and y's, or we have differential dy dx, and our summation signs become integral signs. And here, dy goes from y goes from c to d, x goes from a to b, and we have this iterated integral. We perform this integral first, then we perform the second integral. Now, if you see a double integral written like this, dy dx, then that means that's going to involve dealing with vertical strips. But of course, we didn't have to set the problem up like that. We could have used horizontal strips like this, where here this would be dy, and then we have these small rectangles of not delta y, not dy, of delta y, delta x dimensions. And again, we add up the area of all these small rectangles, starting where x equals a, and adding them all up to get to x equals b, that would give us the area of this horizontal strip. And that's what this expression is. Delta x times delta y, that's one of these small rectangles, add them all up, starting from here when x equals a, and continue until x equals b the area of that horizontal strip is what results. Then if we add up the area of all these horizontal strips, starting down here where y equals c, and just keep adding them up until we get to y equal d, that would be the area then of the entire figure. And that's what this expression is. And of course in calculus, instead of having dx and dy, or delta x and delta y, we have the differentials. x goes from a to b, y goes from c to d, another iterated integral. Now we perform this integration first. And again, if you see a double integral, 
with dx dy, that means it's set up to be dealing with horizontal strips. Now, with our problem, we want to consider not this, but we want this expression. And show that this double integral is equal to this line integral. What we will do is we will prove half of the uh, expression, that is that this double integral of q, partial q with respect to x, dx dy, is equal to the line integral of q dy. And then in the second video, the following video, we'll follow up with the uh, rest of the formula. So here, let's just consider again a very simple figure. And let's say that we're going to take a line integral here in this direction going counterclockwise. So we'd have line integral, so it would be a general form like this. P dx plus Q dy. Now, the differential dx is multiplied by some quantity p, but p, as you saw, hopefully saw in the previous videos, can be a function of x and y, and so can q. And again, general expressions here for the area of any type of figure can be like this, dx dy or dy dx, x goes from a to b, y goes from c to d. Now, something else to remember. Suppose that we just have a very simple integral, say, the integral of x squared dx. That, of course, would equal one-third x cubed plus a constant. So that if we take the derivative of this, or the differential of this, it gives us the expression <coughs> of what's inside the integral. Or the other way of stating this, which is actually the fundamental theorem of calculus, is that if we have, say, the integral of the derivative d dx f of x dx, say x goes from a to b, that is just f of x. x goes from a to b, that equals f of b minus f of a. Now, in our expression here for our problem, we have it written like this. But really, this is like in a generic form. We don't have any limits here, so it could be dx dy or dy dx. Again, completely arbitrary for the general form of the problem. But where we're going to set it up is we want to have a q come out of this. So if we had the partial of q with respect to x, dx. Let's take it like that. So we're going to set it up like this. Double integral. Partial of q. And q can be a function of x and y. <coughs> the partial of this with respect to x. dx dy. Let's make these bigger. x goes from a to b. y goes from c to d. Now let's just take the first integral. That would be this one. 
This should be real simple because this is just going to be Q. So this expression equals single integral from C to D. Q of x, y, x goes from A to B. dy. And here we just plug in x is b minus x is a. So this equals q x is b, so we'll have by minus q a y. dy. And that's after we take a single integration. The first one that we would have to do. And it gives us this expression. And we're not going to take this any further. So what we're going to do though is get more room. So we're going to say this equals this and write it at the top here. So this is what we've uh, derived so far. So we have this double integral partial of q. q is a function of x and y. And then we had it. Partial q with respect to x. dx dy. x goes from a to b. y goes from c to d. We just did the very first integral, which is real simple because this integral is just going to be q with x going from a to b. So we have it in this form then. Like this. So that's what we have so far. Now let's switch gears. Let's ask ourselves if we had the line integral of q dy. And we're going to go about this entire curve. So what would that equal? Now, as we go from here to here, dy is 0, so that's 0. Then we're here, over here where x equals b, and we go straight up from y equals c to y equals d. So that will equal the integral q dy. y goes from c to d. y goes from c up to d. And as we do that, x is just a constant value of b. So this x just stays constant right at that value of b. So we have this. Then continue along. This is 0. Now we're over here where x equals a, and we're up here where y equals d. We go straight down to where y equals c. Of course, x just remains at a. So that would be plus this integral. We started at y equals d, went to y equals c. Then we have q. x is constant for that vertical line is just a. dy. So 
So there's the line integral. And we can combine these together in a single expression, change, switch these around and put a negative sign here. So this would be minus C D. So this will equal the integral from C to D, and then we have Q. B Y minus Q A Y D Y. So the line integral comes out to equal this expression, but this integral is exactly the same as this integral. So what we have established is that this double integral equals this line integral. So we have this double integral partial of q with respect to x. Remember q is, can be a function of x and y. dx dy, x goes from a to b, y goes from c to d, and that equals the total line integral of q dy. And that's what we've derived so far, and that is, as you can see, part of the formula, this being equal to this. Now I have to prove it for the rest of it. So we will do that in the next video. Take a few moments, see if you can uh, duplicate our steps that we just did so far, and see if you can get this expression, and then join us in the next video, and see what we get. But let's just, before we close things out, this really was pretty simple to demonstrate, because we, we had this double integral, but when we integrate here, that's our first step. That's just going to give us Q of X. S goes from B to A. So we have this. We just stopped. We don't go any further. Then we considered the line integral of Q dy. But really, that just involves this vertical line going up when X equals B and this vertical line going straight down when x equals a. And we got this expression, which was the same from the double integral. So in no time at all, we were able to prove that this is true. So come back and join us for the second part of the video. And we'll finish off the rest of the expression. And again, this is uh, our series on vector analysis, and the playlist for it is at the website, which right now is under construction, many parts of it, but the playlist is there at digital-university.org.